Good morning. I'll give it just a second here. I didn't create an event, um, but uh, from now through the end of the year, through the holidays, uh, Mary and I are going to be taking turns, um, her cooking one Monday and me cooking one Monday by ourselves so we can get these recipes in. So thank you for joining me. Um, I'm Linda and welcome to my kitchen. We're Pinky Mouse Sisters in the kitchen. Mary is at home uh, right now. Well, she's probably not home. She's already, already left. This is a very busy week for us and especially for her because her church bazaar is Friday. But um, we are, um, we're excited. We love this time of year. The cold weather just makes it that much more exciting. Uh, we're almost like little kids when it gets this time of year because it just brings back so many memories running back and forth from our house next door to Pinky Balls. And um, it's just, um, we just have so many wonderful memories of us growing up in Nacogdoches. So uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Mary and I are not twins. Uh, she's 17 months older than I am, even though I'm the one with the gray hair. But uh, we're very close in age and also very close um, to each other. So um, I want to welcome y'all today. I hope y'all will share our page and uh, we'll be talking a little bit more as we go on. But I want to get these started. I'm making um, cranberry sauce today and um, I've got for the members, it's on our page. I am going to be making a double recipe today so the, uh, the amounts will be different. But um, we don't tend to get real big cranberries here. I don't know where they ship them to, but ours are usually pretty little. But these are 12 ounce bags. It's Ocean Spray, and I don't know, there may be another brand. But that's all I've ever heard of all my life. And these are uh, from the Massachusetts area. So um, I've washed them. When you get your cranberries and you open them, you do need to wash them, or at least I wash mine. Uh, you know, everybody does something different. Doesn't mean because I do something one way, you do something another way. Either one's right or wrong. This is just how I do it. You'll see that I took out several of the, the bad ones. And then these little tiny spots right here, these are little bitty tiny stems. I hope you can see that. Um, sometimes they have them on there. Sometimes they don't. But I try to go through them after I wash them to make sure that... Um, I've got those off. So um, I've got my burner on over there. So I just, I'll just lay this aside. I just put a paper towel in a baking sheet, spread them out, and then you just kind of go through them, kind of like you do when you're shelling peas and you want to pick the bad ones out. That's kind of what I did here. And I rinsed them with a the colander and I'm just going to put them back in here. And I've got my burner on over there on the stove. So we'll be moving over there in just a second. And um, Mike doesn't like, um, he likes his gel. He doesn't like the, the whole cranberries. I like them both, but I always make some of each uh, before the season's out. So what I'm doing today is I'm just making whole cranberry, um, making cranberry sauce with the whole cranberries. We'll see how good these paper towel are and see if it, if it tears. And I put them up, oh, didn't tear. Okay. So we're going to get rid of this and we're going to move over to the stove and um, I think I know my recipe, but there's a recipe on the back of here, but that is not the one I use. Um, I kind of worked with mine a little, a little bit two or three years ago when, um, when I started making cranberry sauce. I'll get the camera over here because I want y'all to be able to see what I'm doing. Don't necessarily have to see my face, but I want y'all to see what I'm doing. Okay, so I've got the burner on medium high, and I've got, uh, like I said, I'm making a double batch. So I've got a cup of water in here. I'm just going to put it back on the burner. I've washed an orange. I'm going to, this is a big orange. So I'm going to cut the ends of it off and quarter it. And I will show you when I put it in there. I'm not going to put it in there to start with. I'm just going to get my water boiling and then add my sugar and my cranberries. And I believe salt. I guess I probably need to look at the recipe. 
So in the boiler, um, and again, this is double, I've got a cup of water, I'm gonna add some salt to it, and I'm gonna add my sugar. And uh, if you think this is too much sugar, which some of you may, then cut the sugar down. I'm using two cups is what I'm using. So, but I'm using a little more than that because I'm doubling the recipe. So, um, two, uh, one pack, if you're doing the half batch, one pack or the regular batch that's on the, um, on our, um, page for our members, it's one 12 ounce pack of, uh, cranberries, um, two cups of gran imperial granulated sugar, a uh, one orange washed ends cut off and quartered, uh, two tablespoons of sure gel, a dash of salt, and um, a half a cup of water, an eighth a teaspoon of cinnamon, or you can use cinnamon plus. If you don't have the cinnamon plus, you can add a little allspice or nutmeg to it, but I'm gonna use what I've got, which is the cinnamon and cinnamon plus. So my water's boiling. I'm gonna add the sugar, and I'm just gonna get that dissolved. It shouldn't take long to get this boiling. This uh, fine sugar will dissolve really quickly. And I always keep a little bit of extra water just in case. Anytime I'm, I'm fixing something that requires water, I keep a little extra in case I uh, need to add some more. So um, I'll put that cup over there. I just keep me a little bit here in case I need it. I'm going to put a little bit of salt in here. And again, I'm not going to put much. I'm going to put about, probably about a um, fourth a teaspoon in here. And that's just regular table salt. And I'll go ahead and cut my orange. I've, I've already washed it. You want the peeling and all in there. But I do cut the ends of it off. Just like that. I just cut the ends of it off. And, um, and then I'm just going to half it. I'm going to half it, and then I'm going to half it again. So you're going to quarter your orange. Now it's got some juice in it, so it gives it a lot of flavor. And if you ever wonder what to do with your orange and citrus peelings, like lemons, limes, or orange, these are great to clean your sinks out with. Or um, it's also great to just squeeze it in your garbage can and it kind of uh, gives it a good smell. It's just something that I do. Sometimes I even put them in the freezer and take them out as I need them and squeeze them in the garbage can and um, make it smell good. Okay, so um, our sugar is almost come to boil. You can see it's... It's boiling there. I'm going to let it cook just about another minute or so because I want that sugar to kind of get still a little bit grainy. I'm going to let it make sure that it gets dissolved a little bit. I don't need the knife, so I'm going to move this. I never put knives in the dishwater, and uh, the other day uh, somehow a small knife got... Um, in the dishwater and Mike said, what's this knife doing here? You know we don't put knives in the dishwater. I don't know if I've ever done that or not, but somehow or another it got in there, but that's a good practice not to put knives. If you hand wash your dishes, uh, and you should hand wash your knives anyway, but uh, if you have a dishwasher, but um, make sure that you lay them aside and wash them separately. And I have a practice that I always dry my knives as soon as I get through washing them because you don't want, you want to keep your knives nice. And that's one way to do that. Okay, so I got my water boiling. The sugar's dissolved. I'm going to add my cranberries. These are so fun to watch cook. They start popping. And it is just, it's just, I think it's one of the coolest things to do is to watch cranberries start cooking. I'm going to let them uh, start boiling, and then I'm going to add um, some cinnamon, and I'm going to add my oranges and let that boil. Now, if you want to mix your cinnamon with your sugar, you can do that too, and go ahead and put that in there, but um, I just usually add mine afterwards. So, um, here's the Cinnamon Plus, and here's the cinnamon, and you don't have to use the Cinnamon Plus. This has got 
Um, it's got allspice, nutmeg, orange peel, cloves, and ginger, and cinnamon. They're already popping. Um, this is a, a very good product here, or whatever cinnamon you have that you use at home. Um, just make sure that it's good, that it's not um, old. Uh, that's one thing I think during the holidays that um, I've done for years. When you before you start your holiday baking, check all your spices because um, if they're old, they're not going to do your baked goods justice. So um, one way to keep spices fresh longer is to keep them in the freezer. Um, if you don't use a lot of spices then um, I would suggest to keep them in the freezer. If you have spices that are out of date, um, go get you another one. Um, and you can get spices anywhere. You can get them at the dollar store. You can get them at Walmart, Kroger, any of the grocery stores. Depending on what brand you get is going to be the price you pay for them. Um, I, I have certainly bought spices from the Dollar Tree. They're just are from the dollar store, not just the Dollar Tree, but from dollar stores. But they're just not as, they're not quite as intense if you buy a good brand spice. So uh, my philosophy is buy what you can afford. If that's all you can afford, which I've been there many times, then buy that. If you can afford the better, buy that. Okay, so we're already boiling and we're, um, it's fixing to come to a boil. And I hear the cranberries popping. I'm going to wash my hands real quick because I'm going to squeeze the oranges when I put them in there. And I don't want to, I want to make sure my hands are clean. I wish y'all could hear that popping noise. I don't know if you can or not, but it, it's just so fun to, to hear them pop. And you do not need much water at all because, um, uh, they have water content in them, so you can tell there's a lot of liquid in here. That was just with that um, little bit that I put. So I'm going to go ahead and um, squeeze these. Woo! And this was a big orange, so instead of using two, I just used one big one. It's going to give it some really good flavor. These are seedless navel oranges, so there's no seeds. There's not going to be any seeds in them. And for years, um, I think we told y'all the other day that Mama never, um, um, she didn't have cranberry sauce at, um, when we were growing up, we didn't have it. But once I started buying cranberry sauce when I was an adult and I realized that I liked it, um, I bought it for years. I bought the can and a lot of people like the can. And if you do, that's fine. But, um, I'm going to tell you. There is so much difference if you make your own. And it does not take long to make it at all. Um, it's just, um, it's something that you can have made in probably 30 minutes or less, depending on uh, your stove, how high you cook it. I'm putting a fourth a teaspoon of cinnamon in there. And again, this is the good cinnamon. If you have a, if you have a brand that's maybe not quite as potent than this, you might need to put a little bit more in there. And I'm going to put just a tiny bit of this Cinnamon Plus. This is an eighth a teaspoon. And keep in mind that this is a double batch. I'm going to just put just a tiny bit in there. This is really strong here. Okay. Get it stirred up. Get it cooking. So it's going to... I want some berries in it, and I want and some of them. I want to be mashed because I think I think that consistency is really good. Uh, there, there's uh, these are so tiny they cook really really fast. I may not even need to cook this as uh, long as I said to cook it, um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna let it boil here for a little while, and then I'm gonna add some sure gel, just plain old sure gel. Now I do use the regular, the original. I'm not using the, I don't know what it's called, but it's less fat, less calories or something. I do have some in the cabinet. I like this the best. And I actually opened a box this morning and it was open and it was a brand new box and the seam had split. So I had to throw it away because I'm not going to take old chances on putting something in food that I'm cooking that's been open in the package. So I just threw it away. Um, 
Okay, I gotta turn my burner down. This is boiling really good. You can tell it's it's um uh, it's going to town. I hope this is not making the video uh, jar with me moving it around. So I'm not gonna wait as long as I said on the recipe to wait because these are so little. These are these are already cooked. Um, well, I am gonna let that cook just a little bit more because I've got to take out those oranges before I put this sure gel in. So I'll let it cook another minute or two and then I'll take the oranges out. Um, so today we are we are uh, meeting a photographer over in Jefferson and we are having professional pictures made of Pinky Moss and uh, Mary and I and the girls. So um, we had some made, I think it was either a couple years ago, um, I believe it was a couple of years ago. We had them made in a studio and, and they were they were good and they served their purpose, but we wanted to do something different. So, and I won't, I won't spill the beans and tell y'all everything we're doing, but um, we are having pictures made. So we're doing that at one o'clock today. And um, my, um, well, I, my good friend Carmen has helped us out with the location and I will let y'all know more about that later. She works at this place, and she also works at the Willow Tree in Jefferson, which is a very nice gift shop. Y'all heard me talk about the Willow Tree before, and I'll tell y'all some more about that. Um, they do ship also, and they gift wrap beautifully. They do such a great job of gift wrapping. Um, so I'm going to cook this just a hair more. But um, I was thinking about when I was in there getting clothes out, because we're going to do some we're going to change clothes a couple of times while we're doing the pictures. Never made too many professional pictures in my life. I'm not a photogenic person. My sister is. She's always been beautiful. She has a beautiful face, a beautiful smile. And I know beauty comes from within. I, I know all of that. So I'm not, um, you know, I'm certainly not um, trying to put myself down. I was blessed with an abundance of confidence, even from a very small child, confidence is not something I ever lacked. And I always believe that God kind of gave that to me uh, because I, I didn't get the looks in the family. So I think, I think God just kind of said, well, you know what? I'm just going to give her a little bit of uh, confidence and that's going to help her through her life, which it has. Um, so anyway, I kind of like to look at it like that. But I was thinking about... Um, my nose is itching, and if I have to go off camera and scratch it, I'm going to have to wash my hands again, and I think I'm going to have to. When you have, when you have surgery on your face, it's something about the nerves that sometimes just clear out of the blue. It just, you just, it's just... Um, I don't even know how to explain it. It's like underneath your skin or something. So if that happens to me, it seems like it's happened quite a bit lately. But um, so uh, when we, when Mike and I were um, in Albuquerque, this would have been in the mid eight, early to mid 80s. I'm going to get all these out. Um, there was, there was a uh, advertisement for uh, to get your pictures made, and they had a coupon, and he was, the guy was set up at a hotel, and um, so we went, and I don't know, I guess it must have been really cheap, because we really did not have money for stuff like that, we were, we were not, we'd walk to the store to buy groceries to save gas, and that's when the gas was cheap, but um, we went over there to get our pictures made. Mike had on this nice suit. I had on his church outfit. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put my um, sure gel in here and get this mixed up. And because this is a double batch, I'm using four tablespoons. This is just sure gel powder. Now, you can get sure gel in a liquid. And, and it I do like it. But it doesn't seem like it's quite as... Um, it doesn't gel as as much or as quick as the powder does. So I prefer the powder. So 
So this packet has got just a tiny bit over four tablespoons. Um, so we went to this hotel. We set up our appointment. We went over there. And I'm just stirring this real good. Let's see if, let's see if I can get it to where you can see it. I'm going to turn the burner down just a pinch. So we went over there to the hotel, and we were young and silly and carrying on, and we were we were very respectful, but we um, we were laughing. And the guy was like, you know, he was not not a fun guy at all. He was very stoic and wasn't cracking a smile. And so I whispered uh, to Mike, I said, I don't think he likes us at all. And I did not say it very loud at all. I mean, I thought it was just, I thought it was just barely whispering. And he said, I heard that. And, and that just made us laugh that much more. It was just hilarious. It was so funny. But um, then when I was traveling with my work, I'm going to just, I'm going to turn this down. Just let this cook just a little bit. This is going to thicken up after it sets. And keep that in mind. You may think it's not going to be very thick, but it will thicken up after it sets. Um. So I was traveling, and it was at Christmas time, and I was in the mall. I used to love to walk the malls during Christmas to see all the pretty decorations and everything. And, of course, I was by myself, so, you know, it was just something fun for me to do. And they had a um, thing in there, um, picture, picture People, I think was the name of it. And they had people outside, come on in, let us take your picture. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not dressed. But they made me an appointment. And then I went back, and this was in California. I was in California. And um, I went back after I made my appointment and had my picture made. And I was so embarrassed. I was just, I'm not a, I'm not a vain person at all. I never have been. And I just thought, you know, taking a picture of myself, that was money that I shouldn't spend. And I was just coming up with all these excuses but the sweet little uh, people they had working in there were so nice to me. And they made me feel so comfortable. And um, it just it was just something that I had never experienced in my life. And I carried these pictures home on the plane and they were framed. And it was not hard. It was not easy to do, let me tell you. Because when you're taking big picture frames in your hands while you're going through airports, but um, I'm going to just let this cook just a pinch. That's, that's bubbling. And I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, move the camera again. And I'm going to show y'all a couple of pictures. I tried to find the one that Mary and I had made when I was 16. And she had her, we both had made it at the same time. It was the first bought dress that I ever remembered having. I, it it's in a closet and I couldn't get to it so I can't show you that one but I wanted to show you this one um, this is the one that was made in Albuquerque and um, I was I was probably about I don't know 32 33 30, 30, I was probably about 35 here probably probably right around 35 years old and so that was that one I had to take it out of the picture frame. And then this is the one. This is, it's just two shots of the one that I had made in, um, in California that I was telling about at Picture People. And y'all can tell, now this has probably been about 14 years ago. I was not, I was not the size I am now. I was, I was a decent size, but, um, and I had on heels. So those are those are those, and I I just um, of course I kind of I kind of reminded myself of my mama there because I wasn't smiling, and Mama didn't smile a lot in her pictures. You can see I got on a Brighton watch and I got on heels, and I can tell you where I got those heels. I got them at Macy's in Phoenix, Arizona, and um, that's a Brooks Brothers blouse, and I think it's a Jones skirt, and I don't know where the vest come from. I think it might have come from. Um, uh, Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, and I'm not sure where the scarf come from. But anyway, I wanted to show y'all that. So, um, now I'm going to have to get Mike to hang it back up. I had a hard time getting it down, but I'll have him hang it back up because I'm not going to be able to, to reach it. But Mary and I are excited, and Linda and Carla, about having the pictures made today. And um, growing up, I guess pictures always equated when I... 
uh, when I talk about when I thought, when I think about picture taking uh, with school, you know, we always had our pictures made every fall. I was the shortest person in the class, so you know what that meant. They started with the shortest. I was the first person to have my picture made every single year of my life in school. Most of the time, I had a fever blister on my mouth. My hair was straight as a board. <laughs> Poor mama, she tried to fix it, but my hair was never cute and curly like Mary's was. It was usually had a plaid on it and straight bangs. And anyway, I think about when I think about pictures, I think about that. But I absolutely love pictures. I love taking pictures. And a lot of times when we post pictures, I'm the one that's taking them. So, um, you know, I'll take more pictures of everybody else than they take me because that's just what I like to do. I like to take pictures. We did not grow up taking a lot of pictures as kids. Uh, we took very few at Christmas. Um, I don't even think we even had a camera. Um, I know that when we got bigger kids, maybe when we were teenagers, we had a little small camera, and we did take pictures at Easter. But um, it wasn't, take, taking pictures was not something that we did. Uh, it was just, it was just something that didn't have to, money that didn't have to be spent. So we didn't take a lot of pictures when we were kids. And I love pictures. They tell a story. They, um, they place you, um, at a certain time in your life, at a certain year in your life, and I just adore pictures. So I try to take as many as I can, and um, and I love taking them. So today's going to be an experience. Y'all won't get to see them for a while, but um, we're working on something, and we'll tell y'all about that later. But you will get to see them, but it's going to be it's going to be a few weeks before you get to see them. So we have a really good photographer. She, she came to us well recommended. So hopefully it'll be a fun afternoon and um, it's going to be cold and it may be raining, but we're taking them inside. So hopefully that's going to be okay too. So um, I want to, um, I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to pour it up in the bowl and um, show y'all that looks so delicious. It's just such a beautiful, beautiful color. It has no preservatives in it, of course. Um, I mean, you saw what I put in it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't guess sugar has preservatives in it. I don't think it does. I think it's natural. I may be wrong. I'm sure somebody correct me if I am. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, anyway, so we will be here tomorrow at my house cooking. Um, it's going to be something for Thanksgiving, so y'all be sure to join us. Um, I'll be making give it look gravy and um, and then we'll be at Mary's Wednesday and then she'll be working Thursday and Friday at the church. So uh, we got a very, very busy week. So let me, whoo, 22 degrees in Minnesota. That is cold. It's not quite that cold here, but for East Texas, it is, it is pretty chilly. So I'm going to move this over here and pour this up. See, I'm hoping this bowl is this bowl is not cold, but I'm gonna heat this in the microwave just a second, just um, so I'm not pouring that hot hot uh, cranberry sauce in a bowl that's a little chilled. I'm always um, I'm always afraid that if I pour something hot in a cold bowl, that it'll crack and break it, and I sure don't want cranberry sauce all over my kitchen this morning. So I'm gonna warm the bowl up just a pinch and see if that'll help. Um, and, uh, oh my goodness, the yard is covered with leaves, but the good thing is it's this year's leaves. Thank God for our, uh, lawn people that, um, have been so nice to help get our yard cleaned up and get all those old leaves off. I'm so thankful that we were able to get that done. So what's out there is leaves that have fallen this year, not some that was been out there for three or four years. So um, here's the bowl and I did heat it just a pinch and I'm going to um, empty this up. I think I need a, another thing here. I know I'm walking in front of the camera, but I'm just trying to manage the best I can. And 
if y'all can't see me pouring this up, I'll make sure that you see it after I get poured up. Now I'm putting this spoon in this bowl to keep this from splattering. I don't want it splattering all over the place. Going to be just, just about right for this bowl. Now I'm going to take this out. Now it's still it's still very liquidy, but remember it's going to it's going to thicken. I still got just a little bit in here, but I'm not going to fill my bowl any fuller because I don't want it running over the side. So here's my beautiful bowl of cranberry sauce. It's going to thicken up and it's going to be delicious. And that's going to be, after it cools, it'll be put in the refrigerator and uh, ready for uh, Thanksgiving. So I hope that um, y'all have enjoyed this little video. Sometimes um, when I'm doing a video, I think some of the simplest things that I think is simple uh, are the ones that people want to see. And I'm not sure if this is one of them or not, but over the weekend, um, I wanted some fried potatoes. And um, I am a potato girl. I have loved potatoes all of my life. And I told Mike, I said, would you eat some, or ask him, would you eat some potatoes if I cook some potatoes? You know, and I'll fix some ham and eggs, whatever else you want. But all I want is potatoes. And he said, yeah, I'll eat some. So I I sliced them. Sometimes I like to slice them crossways. So I peeled them and got the mandolin out and sliced them. And the mandolin is great because they're going to all be sliced the same thickness. So they're all going to cook basically at the same time. So he came in here and was cutting some ham off because he doesn't like fat. So he's cutting all the fat off the ham, all the good stuff. And um, and I was had started frying the potatoes and he's like... Um, you know that needs to be at a certain temperature when you're <laughs> when you're frying potatoes. <laughs> I'm, I'm like Mike. I think I know how to fry potatoes, but thank you for your advice. So he finished his ham and he got out of the kitchen and let me have it. But it was hilarious because. He was trying to tell me how to fry potatoes, and I've probably been frying potatoes. We used to eat potato, fried potatoes for a snack at night. We ate supper early, and we would always want something later on that evening. And if Mary wasn't fixing uh, cheese toast or Daddy wasn't fixing popcorn, we were fixing fried potatoes, and we loved fried potatoes, just eating, eating fried potatoes in the evening. So uh, anyway, uh, it was just, just kind of comical. So how long will it stay good in the refrigerator? Uh, you keep it in a good covered dish and you're going to be able to keep it in there probably for, I, I would say, I probably have kept it in there for three or four weeks before. Uh, you just need to keep it covered, you know, in a sealed, in an airtight container. Uh, so this is definitely something you can make ahead of time. Now I will tell you that in our part of the country, um, we only get cranberries um, this time of year. And um, I usually try to buy some extra ones because um, I cook dressing probably at least four times a year, maybe five. I love dressing at Easter. You know, there's just times you just want a pan of dressing and you want cranberry sauce to go with it. So um, I thought what I'm going to do this year, I've got, I think I've got about four more bags in there. I have a refrigerator in the utility room and that's where I keep all my overflow stuff. Used to have my baked goods in there when I would make a cake, that's where it would go. But um, I'm thinking about canning some cranberry sauce. I've got some little eight ounce jars and um, I may have mentioned this before if I did, well, y'all forgive me. But um, I'm thinking about canning some just like you do jelly. You know, and that way you would have it whenever you wanted it. And if you run out of cranberries in the freezer, you've got some in a jar that you can open. So I'm thinking about doing that and um, um, may very well do that in, a, in another week or so. Um, so we got lots of things to do. I'm going to be making a pecan pie, another pecan pie, um, several things that to do with Thanksgiving or Christmas. So uh, we know there are tons of recipes. Uh, you can, we know they're all over and lots of people make things different ways, but we have our own way that we make things too. So, um, and I'm going to make some of the little small individual pies too. And I'm real excited about that. 
I'm, I'm going to uh, display them on a little three-tier stand that I have. I'm sure lots of y'all have those um, where you can put cakeies, um, cookies or little um, individual cakes. I call them baby cakes or little um, um, individual mini pies. And that's where I'm going to put them and display them. I'm going to make some uh, pecan. I'm going to make some uh, sweet potato. Um, I'm going to make several different kinds to have a little uh, a variety of desserts. So when someone comes here, uh, then they've got a variety of something to eat. And you don't have a whole big pie, but you've got these little individual pieces. I love individual desserts. I just think they're the cutest thing. I think it's something that... Um, it's just, I like little stuff, so it's something that I really do like. So, um, thank y'all so much for watching. I knew this would not be a long video, but uh, I really appreciate y'all getting on here. Um, please continue to share our videos and to share our page. Um, it just warms our heart when we see our numbers grow because we know we're reaching more people. And um, it... Um, we believe that we have a message to tell. And um, uh, again, you know, we may not be everybody's cup of tea, but I do believe that there are people out there that um, well, y'all have showed us that you like what we have to say and that y'all like what we do, whether or not it's just laughing and talking or cutting up or whatever, singing or whatever we're doing. But we appreciate each and every one of you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you so much. And, um, We'll be back on in the morning, 10 o'clock here at my house. And um, so if you want to watch and learn how to make giblet gravy, or maybe you want to see how I make giblet gravy, well, uh, be sure to watch it. So I love y'all. I miss my sister, but I'll be seeing her in a couple hours. And um, then we'll be back tomorrow. Um, the whole crew should be here tomorrow, little Linda and Carla. I think Carla's going to still be here tomorrow. Anyway, thank you very much. Love y'all. Don't forget to count your blessings. And if you're in the um, area where it's really cold, stay warm. If you have an elderly neighbor or a friend that uh, you need to check on, call them, text them, go see them, take them some soup, um, take them something, you know, see if they need milk or any uh, bread or anything from the store. Um, I know that people that are shut in um, always appreciate someone's kindness. And um, and, and we, we love y'all so much. Bye-bye.